Dustin with DP Engineering. I am going to visit uh, Nathan, uh, who has the water car claim and the small bricks and Stratton claim, where he says he has been able to run the small engine on water injection. I'm in the Carolinas right now. I uh, just stopped to get some gas. Uh, we're here with the old Smacks Mobile. I'm doing the 2,000 mile round trip. It's actually 2,200 miles, 1,100 each way. I'm about halfway through right now. And, uh, well, we got a lot of a lot of this going on. I've been driving all night in the snow and the, on the icy roads. Uh, the weather hasn't been all that great here, you know, being middle of December and all. But, uh, hey, we're doing what we got to do. I want to thank everybody for donating funds for this excursion. And hopefully, you know, I'm real optimistic. I'm, I'm hoping to come back with some really exciting information. I'm hoping to be able to provide proof of uh, these claims. Okay, ready? Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. Okay, turn the switch on. See how slow it is? Yep. There it goes just a little bit. It's more than you would imagine. Alright, yep. let's change it. Alright, let me shut it off. Flip it around. And this yeah. is how and this is how you plate yeah. gold onto you got it. it on? Yep, it's on right now. Okay, you'll notice it calm down. Yep, and there it is. So this is how you're plating the metals. Yeah, you can do it like this, but if you notice, there's more gas there now. So having looked at all those different interesting technologies, the next obvious question was uh, to demonstrate the small Briggs and Stratton engine running on water. So I was a little disappointed when we finally got to the point to view the demonstration of the engine uh, when we had to actually dig it out of uh, storage. 
Nathred had been aware of my coming arrival for about a month, so I had pretty much expected the engine to be set up and prepared uh, for demonstration. Uh, in reality, we had to dig it out of the shop that you see here and uh, move some stuff around. It had obviously been sitting in one spot for an extended period of time, hadn't been touched or run in quite a while. Okay, so here's the spark plug uh, coming out of the test engine and uh, it smells like gas and there's, you can see some carbon on it, a bit of oil, yeah it's definitely well, it's sort of seized up there a little bit. Yeah. You think it's because you think it's because of the water that we were injecting into the carburetor in those Last videos? Time I ran it. Huh? Last time I run it. And it probably seized up the piston rings. Yeah. Well, at least I don't know it, about the rings, but I know it's got rust on the cylinder a little bit. Well, at least you're able to turn it. Okay, so what we're doing is we're draining the oil out of the crankcase. As you can see, it's really watery. This is what's coming out of the crankcase prior to running. And it smells like gasoline and it, and it looks a little bit like there's coolant in there. So, and it's not very, it doesn't have any lubricating qualities. This is what's coming out of the oil drain plug. You can see that it's mostly, there's a lot of water in there, very little oil, no lubricating qualities whatsoever, and a very strong uh, scent of gasoline in that crankcase fluid mixture of oil and water. Okay, so what Nathan is claiming is that he intentionally added gasoline to this oil mixture when the engine was being inspected by the government. He wanted, to, he says he wanted to do that to give them a reason why the engine could run off water uh, without admitting that it could run off water. He wanted, he said he purposefully fudged their examination by adding gasoline to the oil so that they wouldn't believe that it ran off water so they'd leave him alone. That's what his claim is. Okay, was. so to flush all the gasoline fumes and any oil residues out of the crankcase so that no one can say it's running off the fumes in the crankcase, he's uh, running water through the, the crankcase with the oil filter off. You can see there's, and there's a dish soap there. That's not gasoline, that is water. I can vouch for that. It looks like water and it smells like water. It's water, so there's no question about it. You put a little bit of dish soap in there, uh, and it's actually coming out through the, the crankcase of ventilation pipe and into the carburetor. So basically, this engine has been completely and entirely flushed, uh, as well as can be with a garden hose and Dawn dish soap detergent of any petroleum product. Okay, what we're doing right now, we're just turning the motor over with the spark plug out to push out any contaminants in the system, any water gets pushed out. That's it, we're just using the starter. Pushing out the water. Okay, so the next thing we've done, this is the float bowl of the carburetor. We've actually taken it off, taken the float bowl off so it's open. Here's the float bowl here, taken off and completely removed, including the, uh, the shutoff switch, it's all gone. And what we have in its place is the float bowl and there seems to be there's some electrical tape wrapped around the outside of it. To keep the float. Uh, to keep the to, right, to keep yeah. the float from falling off. And there's the uh well, if you can, it's hose really from the it's pretty dark, but the hose from the crankcase breather is sitting right there open and we've taken the oil filter off. Yep. Okay, yeah, that's better. So Here's the crankcase vent hose right there. And if you shine the light right on this bowl, here's the fuel bowl. Completely empty and devoid of any fuels whatsoever. Alright, this is the water that we're using. It's bottled water right out of the bottle. Never been opened. I personally cracked the seal on it. I smell it. It smells like water. I tasted it. It tastes like water. There's no alcohol in there. There's no as far as human senses are concerned, no detectable petroleum additives whatsoever. This is the same bottle that was used in the uh, YouTube video that was posted. It's the same exact bottle that he used before. Same exact tube.
just demonstrating the fact that there are no combustibles in the tube. You watched us previously flush out the crankcase with water and dish soap. He's now adding the water, as you can see. So this is straight out of the bottle. I've checked it. I've smelled it. I've tasted it. It's it's spring water. It's just like anything that you buy at the store. Well, the uh, stock ignition works. So now that we have flushed the engine of all petroleum contaminants and we have verified the proper operation of the stock ignition system, the next step is to install the custom coil system that Nathrin has designed, which is the heart of the system and the only modification to the engine that he has done to allow it to, according to his claim, run completely off tap water. I was shown this coil in great detail, was allowed to examine it, and I actually have a this exact coil in my possession. He gave it to me voluntarily, and he wrapped another one for his own use and gave me the original one. The one that you are looking at is the one that the actual coil that he used that was in the silver cup that ran the engine and the videos that he featured on his YouTube channel. So uh, we're going to go over this coil in great detail, exactly how it's wrapped and how it's hooked up. Okay, so this is the heart of the system. This is the coil that Nathan claims is the reason is the technology all alone in itself that makes this water for fuel technology in the small Briggs and Stratton engine work. There are no other modifications to this engine uh, as he claims. No uh, other ignition modifications, no fuel delivery modifications, carburetor stock, everything completely stock except for this item. So as you can see, I have it in my possession. It's not a copy. This is the actual coil setup that Nathan used in the video that in which is shown his engine running. And the very same coil that he tested on the engine that I was to witness that did not run in my presence. So the way this is hooked up is you have... Uh, basically, he unplugs the stock spark plug wire from the stock spark plug and he inserts one end here into the uh, spark plug receptacle. He sl slips this hoop right in. And then on this end uh, he connects to the spark plug. 